Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today, we are going to have a look at introducing some modular detailing tips into this series, so please let me know what you think of these videos down in the comments below, whether or not you'd like them integrated into the modular build series, or if you prefer our traditional modular builds where we're measuring road layouts, and placing assets to build specific things within the cities. Today we're going to have a look at the various applications of Path Against Road Action and how it can be used to decorate our key junctions, smaller roads, repeated tree and fence patterns, alongside some different path variations just to help highlight our road networks a little bit more. Let's get started shall we? So here we have various different types of Path Against Road Action, now I do this kind of thing all the time in my city. Now, from a functionality point of view, it's fairly pointless because, of course, people can walk on the pavements or the sidewalks for our American friends. However, it serves as a nice way of highlighting an arterial road or something important, especially if you're running down into something like a downtown build, as such as we can see, as we have this conveniently placed uh, backdrop behind us. But there's various things we can do with this idea and different patterns we can run it in and different themes and elevations and shapes and all different kinds of ideas. So we have our kind of our four part life paths, right? This is some very basic um, path against road action here. Just got part path, amusement part path, nature reserve path, and zoo path. Lots of path. <laughs> so uh, let's see what we can do uh, to expand this idea today. And uh, we'll start out with some small road ideas and then move up to our larger arterials and then into some elevated stuff as well. So let's discuss some path against road action, shall we? So the first template we'll discuss here is going to be using our small roads and how we can make a one-way system seem a little more interesting using path and tree decoration. So I'm going to change this road here into a one-way system and then introduce another switchback coming the opposite way, of course. Um, now when we're decorating these roads here, it's a nice idea to leave an odd number of tiles between each road. So you can see here we're leaving five. Odd numbers just work better for uh, symmetry purposes, of course, well, depending on the width of the asset. So paths are one tile wide, so it will centralise uh, with this system here. So now we have our system in, cars are going to come out this way. So any kind of one-way road network within your city here. Then we're going to come in, just really basic to start off with. I'm just going to run an amusement park path down the middle. And then the reason why we're leaving a odd number of tiles between is so we can just draw through with the part tiles. If you are having difficulty placing them, you can actually use Vanilla Pathway. And then Vanilla Pathway is a little more flexible for some reason, just how it behaves in the game. And then you can upgrade it into your chosen part type afterwards. So you can add different connections into the pathway here. And then what we'll do is down the middle, just pick any type of tree. Of course, I'm going to use the prop line tool here just for saving time, but you can use whatever kind of tree you want. Uh, and then we can run a line of trees either side. Nice and basic, I only use bamboo for this, but of course you can use whatever you want. If you don't want to place your own trees as well, of course, you can just use uh, the version of your path with decorations. And then within this tree line, we're then going to run uh, some larger bush spice, of course. So we'll come into slightly more space in here. Alright. It's nice and simple. And then what we'll see here is just a nice little pop of colour. Of course, if you're playing on snow maps, you won't really get this, but <laughs> snow people problems. But a nice pop of colour and greenery and within our grey road network. You can, of course, tie in tram squares into this as well, alongside monorail stops and speed public transport into these types of designs. But really, a one-way road network tied in with uh, some trees and some bushes and, of course, some public transport um, just helps bring a little more life and vibrance uh, into our road. So a really simple but quite effective uh, use of path against road action here as to how we can decorate our internal road networks a little more. Okay, so now discuss uh, some arterial types of decoration. So again, with any arterial road, you can upgrade this into whichever version you fancy. It might go for the one uh, with the decorative grass here if I fancy it. Okay, so with any arterial, uh, we can now come into our pathways and maybe change with the path here. Of course, with any of these designs, you can use whatever path you want. It doesn't really matter. It's entirely up to you. So I want to maybe run with some uh, nature reserve with decorations. And again, I'm going to leave a two tile distance between the road and the pathway because it allows for easier connections to draw in. So let's run this down. Um, it should be noted as well that with the nature reserve path with decorations, um, the orientation of the lights does switch depending how you draw in the path. 
So if you draw in from left to right, the lights will be on the right hand side. Likewise, right to left, it will switch the paths onto the other side. So if you want that symmetry, then just make sure that you're maintaining um, that consistency, otherwise the lights will be all different. So now that we have arterial and path established, I can of course come in and drop in a couple of connections. And then I'm going to grab some fencing, again, whatever type of fencing you want. Uh, nature reserve fencing obviously will work tremendously well uh, with nature reserve, so we can maybe draw in uh, a touch of nature reserve fencing in the tile uh, straight adjacent to the pathway. Okay. So I've never seen something that looks like this around our main road. See how it's almost like an extension of the road, you know? You're just kind of making it a little chunkier. And then why don't we grab a larger tree this time, perhaps a row of giant redwoods, which is often a neglected tree. And because we're using a tree, it's often a nice idea just to uh, increase the spacing so it's not uh, quite as dominant. Then we can bring these up in a fashion to something like this. Okay, and then come down in a smaller system, start placing some overgrowth in and around the spaces of the trees. Don't go too overboard with it, just here and there. Which I know is probably strange to hear me say, don't go <laughs> overboard with the overgrowth, but just a couple of little blemishes, all right? And then some smaller rocks either side. So we're going for quite a natural decoration along the road here as well. So it's really, really up to you. You know, you can turn this out for um, park path and park assets, and include restrooms and cafes along the arterial. Um, or you can go kind of a, a natural overgrown look like this. Maybe just a couple of bits more overgrowth. And then we can finish this off with a nice overgrown look. So again, what we'll generate here now is kind of a similar look to what we looked at first of all, but we're switching the orientation of the paths against the road. This time they're on the outside as opposed to the inside. And we're looking at a much more natural overgrown lock with rocks and overgrowth underneath, alongside a larger looking tree like the redwood. Of course, change out the trees and the paths, whatever you want. The look is really down to you. And uh, the fencing gives it a nice border as well. And feel free to bring in some zonings on the opposite side of that fence, which will really help box it in that little bit more. But a nice overgrown look here uh, with the grassy arterial road. And seeing some people pick up the pathways just to walk back and to a little easier. So it's all about increasing the walkability alongside decorating our cities as well. Of course, the pathway doesn't always have to run directly straight and parallel with the arterial road. We can come into our freeform tool and then start introducing some slightly softer uh, curves in measurements of 70 every now and again. And then you can, of course, just continue to uh, repeat this design. That's making sure that you're sticking to your chosen road length measurement, which to me is 70. Okay, and then again you can flank this with uh, some more fencing if you want. You can run the fencing straight or curve it with the pathway. Uh, it's up to you. It's going to help introduce uh, some different shapes and angles. And then perhaps uh, some more sporadic uh, tree placement, nothing too landscaped, okay? Various different ideas we can get involved with here today. Maybe introduce uh, some larger bushes too. Some smaller ones scattered around. So you just kind of get the idea, right? This is the premise of kind of playing with different shapes and different tree themes, different ideas. And then of course some overgrowth is always welcome, perhaps around at the base of some of these larger bushes. And then clusters of smaller trees around the large. Okay, little clusters of green tree are always nice as well. So there's varying different ideas that you can put together here. But you see that there's a couple of different ways we can take our arterial decoration, very straight, rigid and symmetrical path and tree designs. But we can take it a little more wavy with the pathways, a uh, different type of fence, and a much more random tree placement. And it really does bring a different vibe, even though it's essentially doing the same thing of path and tree decoration alongside a road. We are just introducing those different shapes and slight variations but they have changed the theme, and of course you can hook this into a wider path network, perhaps a cycle network as well. And plenty of other kind of ideas and builds that already exist within your city. Now these will all integrate nicely into them.
So we'll now look at cross intersection. And there's a couple of different ideas we can do here uh, with elevated pathways, of course. So I want to come into some versions with decorations now to uh, save me place on my own trees. Of course, you can do uh, whatever version uh, that you want. I'm going to change my elevation step down to the lowest point. And then we're going to draw up by a distance of 11 tiles right into the corner. And then come up by a point of three steps. And then repeat that on this side as well. One, two, and three. And then you want to do it exactly the same on the other side. Again, you can always redraw the measurement and find out it's 222. Find that same measurement on this side. And then repeat it. Okay. And then just link everyone together in a nice simple box format. And then repeat these down on this side as well. So a very easy, uh, but still quite large and impressive kind of crosswalk junction here with our path decorations. Uh, you can then of course continue to link uh, along the side of the road with some classic path against road action. Going into various different directions. Okay. And then bring these ones down as well. And then what we can do once we have all our path network established around the main arterial, then we can just link everyone together uh, with some nice 45 degree um, straight cuts. So if they want to get straight across to this side, they don't have to come up the ramps, they can just go straight across. And then within these spaces, of course, you've got plenty of space to come in uh, with some more of your chosen fence network. And then draw in perhaps some little triangles within these dead spaces. And then just flash out with some base overgrowth. And then a collection of your favourite trees. Can be whatever right just kind of make it look how you want doesn't have to be this dense it can be more landscapes if you want go for uh, perhaps a, a quadrant of color trees that pack out each of these squares very different designs you can get involved with with this one and then what we're left with is an additional layer of height above our road network as well which is always a nice addition into the city and 99 percent of the time the pedestrian ai will choose to use a path network over a pedestrian crossing even if that path network is slightly longer for them to actually walk, and which will of course help increase your traffic as well, not only by having more citizens walking around because the paths are there, but also because they're not using the crosswalks, which of course slows down your traffic, and especially in high density areas where you get a lot of foot traffic. So a nice little elevated system like this looks nice and serves a purpose too. So we'll now work on a slightly quirkier and more abstract version of the elevated above road uh, path network system here. So I'm going to switch up the path network. You can, of course, use whatever you want. I'm going to go for my amusement park path with decorations here. And then from each of our bottom points, again, measuring it out by points of 11. On one side of the road, I'm going to come up by three steps. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to come up by five. Okay. And then I'm going to draw diagonally across into the adjacent square. Same again here as well. And then I'm going to link them down into those measurements of 11. So this is going to give us a little cross over the main intersection. Okay. Now with this design, it's quite abstract, of course. It's um, you're getting some very modern looking sharp angles in here. Also multiple layers of height when you're looking down at your road. The fifth elevation, it's a little steep, but I think we can just about get away with it. Of course, if you're if you're playing with Move It, um, you can just bring this down so it's not quite as steep. But for those without mods, it's just about bearable. It's not too high to be unrealistic. And you're going to get a nice uh, bird's eye view down here alongside a wonderful uh, street level view as well with multiple layers of height crisscrossing each other here as well. So something to consider with a design like this where the shapes are a little quirkier and we're working with uh, some kind of different themes and ideas, all right? Um, is the inclusion of unique buildings around your key uh, road junctions. So where we have uh, quite a... I'm not sure what the phrase is. Is abstract? Modern? Not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure on the terminology here. Uh, but the inclusion and uh, complementary nature of some of the unique buildings will work really nicely with this design. Now, in particular, there's an asset I'm thinking of, um, such as the uh, museum. Uh, of modern art here. Let's uh, adjust our road network ever so slightly. 
Okay, so you can kind of factor in this one around it and then the assets like the grand library will also work nicely here too. Uh, Pyramid of safety will also be a good shout, uh, but you can also include uh, perhaps some of the uh, modern city center uh, creator buildings just sitting alongside this as well. And um, if we were to have a little look at this idea, uh, we can maybe come in again, making sure that we're leaving a distance of two tiles uh, everywhere around this path network. Of course, this allows us to Make sure we can link everyone in without having to squeeze in too many awkward spaces. I'll go ahead and set up some uh, modern city centre commercial here as well. And then we'll have a little look at how this thing looks once it's surrounded by some more important looking assets. But now we can see that the addition of two layers of elevated path network, uh, the precise placement of some unique buildings, uh, you know, the, the sharp edges kind of really complement the path network here. So even factoring in the shape of your asset placement um, can really just help bring that extra layer of detail in towards a key uh, cross-junction within your city. And also the inclusion of the modern city centre and some IT cluster stuff on the opposite side as well. Uh, it's always nice. And of course the, the tram system. Uh, it's always nice to see trams in city skylines anyway, isn't it? So everyone likes a bit of public transport and um, it can be used to decorate uh, a key junction in your city like this as well. Uh, so really nice design, I'm a huge fan of this one, I think we'll definitely see this in the various downtown at one of the key crossroads. But hopefully you can see how just the simple thing of changing up different layers of elevation with our path networks and of course some repeated tree patterns can just help decorate our roads a little bit more. And then last but certainly not least we'll have a little discussion about some possible roundabout decoration. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is to come in with the road guideline and then draw it by four. And then just keep coming across. You just hook into each of these segments. Then you can get a nice perfect circle within your roundabout here. If you want to, you can draw connections through the middle. I think this is a little bit much, but uh, it's up to you how you want to do this. And then there's some classic stuff that we've already done today. is just to continue to frame the roads in the run up to the roundabout with our chosen path network. And then within the grid next door, we want to run some more of that classic fence detailing. And then we can just curve these around, meet up with each corner. So once you have all your fences and paths hooked in, it's then just a case of choosing a tree. And then you can just line each of the path networks. On the outside or the inside of the fence of course you can always change the measurements here to something that suits you kind of switch the orientations and the angles of each decoration palette move them up or down or kind of inside and outside and um, it's really up to you and there's always opportunities as well for a little bit of uh, terraforming uh, within the center of the roundabout soften it out a little bit uh, a u is always a nice design uh, right here Drop in you in the middle. Got some uh, larger bits of overgrowth around it. And of course some complementary rocks. Always go a long way. And then we'll have a nice uh, decorated roundabout. So the whole point of this shape and design here is to really highlight the run up to the roundabout with lots of repeated tree, fence and path action. And of course the, the palettes are near endless. You can use different variations of path. You can maybe use different paths on different roads that come off the roundabout that, which lead into different themed areas, perhaps a nature reserve path lined road that leads into a, a rural side of your city. And likewise with an amusement park path lined road that perhaps leads directly into an amusement park. So there's all these different things that you can factor in to help these things come to life a little bit more and give them a little more purpose. But you know, just simple path and tree and the definition of today's video of path against road action just help highlight our road infrastructure a little bit more. Uh, give it just just help to draw the eye. Uh, I guess is the take home point from today's video. But a very simple and effective way of detailing uh, a roundabout, which of course we see everywhere in our cities. Uh, this is really endless options. You can do the elevation like we've looked at today as well. It doesn't have to be flat on the road like this, but truly endless possibilities with path against road action. Okay, guys, that is going to do it for today. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, a like below is always appreciated. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a dislike as well.
Uh, and please also uh, leave some feedback below on what you think of the new detailing tips to be integrated into the Modules of Build series. If you guys enjoyed this and indeed have some ideas and suggestions of what you would like to see covered in modular detailing, then please leave them down in a comment below. And if you think this doesn't work and it wasn't at all useful and you just want to see traditional modular builds with a measuring road networks, placing assets to build specific things that you can place within your city, then please let me know as well. We're always keen to try new stuff with City Skyline, stuff to make our cities more beautiful and functional as well. I will include some nighttime cinematics. Of course, <laughs> we always uh, always appreciate a nighttime shot, I think, don't we? I know they should look pretty nice, uh, some of these at nighttime as well. So do hang around for the very small outro times. But otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.